I would like to show you one of my favorite whistles. Uh, at least it's one of my favorite whistles after uh, it's been tweaked. Uh, as they come out of the box, uh, I can't play them. Uh, they take so much uh, extravagant amount of air, uh, I just simply run out of breath so quickly that, uh, that I, can't, I can't play through a passage. Uh, but after they've been tweaked, uh, these are wonderful whistles, and <clears throat> they have an authentic um, traditional voice uh, that has uh, pretty much disappeared uh, from the music uh, since these whistles uh, uh, are not widely played. Uh, that is uh, a Clark original, uh, which uh, comes in this very nice box. Uh, it's a beautiful instrument. It has a black and gold uh, Victorian uh, decoration. Um, it has established 1843 uh, which was when the Clark uh, whistle uh, business began, uh, written on the on the tone body. And the thing that makes this whistle special is it has a conical bore, and it's made with rather thin uh, tin plate steel, rolled and soldered tin plate steel, which is what gives the name tin whistle. The thin steel, that is uh, ten thousandths of an inch thick, as compared to fourteen thousandths of an inch thick, which is the thickness of the brass whistles like the uh, Generations and the Fedugs and the uh, Waltons. Uh, that thin metal, together with the conical bore, creates a sort of an echo chamber. And there's a resonance about it that gives it an ethereal, sort of haunting uh, quality. Uh, that is uh, can be especially uh, beautiful. But you don't get the full advantage of that right out of the box because there are two major problems uh, with these. The first is the windway is enormous. You can see here that is a huge um, diameter to be blowing air through. And the sound blade, if I can show it here, I'll, I'll try. The sound blade has a sort of a wavy shape to it, which is extremely inefficient. Um, that sound blade should be a straight, flat surface uh, parallel to the windway floor. Uh, this sort of a wavy, sort of a rounded M shape that they press it into, um, only about 25% of the sound blade is in the right position with respect to the windway floor, if, if that much and you get a very inefficient, windy sounding, um, unfocused sort of a, of a sound from it. So I tweak these whistles and I'll show you the difference between the uh, straight out of the box stock untweaked Clark original and my Freeman tweaked Clark original. And then I'll explain what I do to these uh, to get that result. Some of the notes on this untweaked Clark original sound very good. Uh, those in particular are the notes at the top of the upper register. The problem with those notes is that they take so much air that they're almost impossible to play. Uh, these are out of the box, they're quite variable. Uh, this one has a uh, they all have a very weak uh, bottom end uh, with a lot of wind noise uh, in the sound of them. Uh, this one is particularly weak in the bottom end, as you'll see. So you have notes at the bottom that are almost unplayable or unusable uh, in the way they sound, easy enough to play. And then you have notes at the very top that are almost unusable, uh, not because of the sound. They sound okay but because they take so much air to play that you just you just don't want to try to do it so here you here here we go i'm barely blowing into this and it's breaking into the upper register before it gives you a clean note
we're getting some some good sounding notes. Already that's taking a lot of breath, more breath than I'm comfortable with, and we're still in the lower register. So those notes are okay, but I can't play them in a in a tune because they take so much breath. You heard how I had to take a breath almost between every two or so notes, and I really had to fill my lungs to be able to do that. Now here is a Freeman tweaked Clark original, um, and the first thing you can see is notice the difference in the windway the uh, amount of air that you have to blow through through this windway is much more manageable. It still takes quite a lot of air. It takes a lot of air compared to, say, a Generation or a Fat Dog, but it's quite playable. You just have to manage where you take your breaths so that you're ready if you have a fairly long phrase in the high upper register so that you've got enough air for it. And then the sound blade, you can see that. It goes straight across and it has to be at just exactly the right uh, height also, uh, you know, up or down, so that it's properly spaced above the windway. So I'll give you a sample of how this sounds. For comparison, let me try to play that same uh, tune on the untweaked Clark original. So I can't get through those, that, that short passage at the top. I, I simply cannot play all the way through just those three longish uh, notes on that whistle. And I was able to stay fairly cleanly um, in the bottom register of the, the, the bottom couple of notes, but you have to really baby those, those bottom notes on the, on the untweaked version to keep it from uh, turning um, you know, kind of uh, raspy sounding or, or breaking into the upper register. So here, here's just a scale. I'm only going to play the bottom notes on this. It gets, it starts to be clean right about here. Down below here, it's, it's, it's dirty sounding and very weak with a lot of um, air noise uh, in the middle of the sound. If you go online, you can find instructions for how to tweak these if you happen to own one. Um, I, I can't guarantee that you'll be able to have um, the same um, success that I have with them, but you certainly should be able to improve them in any case, and at the very least uh, make it so that it doesn't take so terribly much air, so it's, it's easier for you to play. Um, I've tweaked 
probably hundreds uh, of uh, Clarks and also Shaws, which is a conical bore uh, rolled and soldered uh, whistle, which is the same design. And I've uh, made uh, specialized uh, tools for myself so that I'm able to do it uh, much more precisely and um, with repeatable results. So you have to smash the, the top of the windway down and to do that you can't just press down on the top because the sides will pop out. Uh, they're glued to the, or to put it another way, the wooden plug is glued in. So if you push down on the top the sides will pop out and the wooden plug will come unglued. So I take a piece of uh, uh, doubled up uh, masking tape and put it around the sides like that. And I take a vice grip that I've s adjusted so that it puts just the, just the right amount of pressure on the sides. And I hold the sides together like that. The lacquer, this black lacquer, is rather soft, so you have to be careful uh, that you don't mar the, the finish. Uh, if I did this without the tape, it would, it would make a, uh, an unsightly mark on the side. And then I have this tool. These are duck-billed jeweler's pliers. Let's see, can you see that? And I've ground this away so that it fits inside. Let's see here. It fits inside the windway there. And then I can very systematically work the windway into the shape that I want it. And you also have to press the outlet end of the top of the windway down to the right height. Uh, that really helps to focus the voicing, uh, and it helps to keep it from demanding uh, so much air that it makes it uh, so difficult to play. If you push the top, the exit end of the voicing window down too far, uh, the note will buzz. So you have to find the lowest far down it will go without causing that buzzing to give you the most focus possible uh, and clean sound. And then uh, I work on the... I, I insert this into the... under the sound blade and just work on bending it up and down and straightening it out and then experimenting with uh, the relationship of the sound blade to the windway floor, how far up or how far down. It needs to have a little daylight under it, um, but not too much. Uh, and y you can tinker with that until you get uh, something that you like. I also round off a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but uh, the end of the block here, the, this little um, corner here, I round that off a little bit with, with sandpaper. I've made a tool that I can I can get in there with that I wrap a little strip of sandpaper around and I get in there and I ease that so it's not a sharp corner. Uh, when you do that, uh, when you put a little radius on the end of the, the, the windway floor like that uh, on any whistle, uh, it helps to clean up the voicing and make it uh, um, less uh, chaotic to play. It'll tend to break more cleanly between the registers and uh, the voicing will tend to be a little more focused. So that's that's my demonstration. That's the Freeman Tweaked Clark Original. Uh, this is, I think, the most expensive of the mass-produced whistles. They retail for around $25. Um, and out of the box, they should be better set up than they are. It's a little like buying a guitar or a fiddle that is potentially a really good instrument, but uh, you know the the string height above the fretboard is all wrong, and in a fiddle, the it needs a new sound post, and the bridge isn't positioned correctly, and all of that. But there's nothing wrong with the instrument, so um, I do recommend this whistle. I, I hope that it uh, gets more popularized again as, as more and more people get a playable, appropriately tweaked version of a, of a Clark original uh, so that that voicing, that wonderful haunting sound of that uh, conical bore, uh, thin uh, resonant metal uh, tone body 
uh, can can come back into the music uh, again.